listening to the audio-only version of Cocktails with Cav, a popular video cast streamed live only on X. Follow us here on Spotify or on X at Cav Literature. Oh, happy Thursday, everybody. We're ready to slide into the weekend with another great Cocktails with Cav show. Tonight, you're going to want to stick around. We have an incredible romance and historical fiction author. She's also an educator. She's incredible. You're you're definitely going to want to watch this one. Let's take care of a quick little bit of housekeeping again. If you haven't visited our merch page, go visit us there. We have a great amount of swag, all kinds of stuff for you. Just I'm telling you, the official cocktails with Cav drinking glass is just taking off because we have a lot of people drinking cocktails with us. So that's awesome. Anyway, I have my my standard whiskey and seven. It's it's a great drink. And I'm telling you, I'm going to pick up a whiskey sponsor before this is over. (laughs) And as always, we have our QR code always up in the corner take you straight to our tip function and i'll tell you what as always anyone who supports the show so we can continue to bring you great indie authors entertainers and artists on the show anybody who supports our tip function receives a free copy of my uh short story one of my series on barnes and noble you can go ahead and pick that up That'll, that'll be free to you, anybody who supports the show. So we greatly appreciate it. Ah, enough of all that. I tell you what, I hope everybody's poured a little cocktail or coffee, depending on where you're watching us in the time zone you're in around the world. But we appreciate you greatly. The audience has been so good to us. So let's get to it. Our incredible guest, J.G. McLeod. Jen, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad to have you live from Ontario, Canada. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Thanks oh. for having me. Oh, awesome. No, I've been excited to have you on, uh, having interacted with you on X. You, you're just wonderful uh, to have some conversations with and, and definitely exploring your work on your sites. Uh, very intrigued. Uh, great, great indie author, uh, award winning. And, and we'll talk about that later, but we want to get to know you. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you embarked on this journey of writing and, and becoming a, such a prolific author? Um, it's kind of a long story, but to, to shorten it, just I'm like most authors where I've been writing since I was a kid. Um, but life was just so busy and took over. I was in university got a couple different degrees. I've been teaching for over 20 years and I have three kids. So all of that meant that writing wasn't the priority for a long time. Oh, I imagine so. so. The long, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the long story is that it just took a while for me to, I guess, prioritize it and um, also finish stuff. Cause I think that's a, a, a thing that we all struggle with. A lot of writers will write you know, parts of things, but they don't always follow through and, and finish the story. So my journey was just making a decision finally that I was going to prioritize it a bit more and actually complete the works. And that was around, I think, 2016, when I really started to write more seriously and devote time every night to it. So, yeah. Did, um, did you find that was kind of the key is, is is establishing that routine, you know, you know, so, okay, I'm going to work, write 1500 words tonight, or, you know, it, yeah. was that your technique to, to kind of end that writing procrastination? It, it was, yeah, because I mean, as a teacher, I teach secondary English. So I, I was, I was always writing something, but it just wasn't for me. I was marking and, you know, parenting and stuff in the evening. So it it just wasn't happening so finally I decided that it was going to be an hour a night so I didn't set a word count or anything I just thought if I immersed myself for an hour um, each night in the craft somehow that I would maybe finally produce or finish something and I did it it was amazing how just a small amount of writing can add up and it's funny because I published eight books that way 
And in the last year and a half to two years, it just stopped because I wasn't actually doing that anymore. And another author on X did a challenge about maybe five days ago or so and said, why don't you write one sentence a night? And ever since she suggested that, which was similar to what I had been doing back in say 2016, 2017, I've written maybe six or 7,000 words in just a few days. Wow, um, wow, yeah. So it works. <laughs> the small little bit of a commitment, it adds up. I, I imagine so. And do you think that, um, what, what was the first work that you that you ended up completing and, and settling down and, and having up? Um, mine was Abalone. It was my, my debut novel. And that one was, um, I think it's around 400 pages. So it's quite, I mean, it's quite a lengthy book, um, but it didn't take that long doing it the way that I said. I think it might've been four months to actually just get the words down. And then obviously passing it off to an editor and stuff took time, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't a big thing once I committed to that small little bit every night. I think I wrote my first three novels within a year. Um, oh, wow. Every yeah. four months or so, I was finishing something by doing it that way. So for me, that works. I mean, I'm not saying that works for everyone, but definitely right. well, need to complete you. it if. Yeah, yeah and, and a, a little writing, you're right, goes a long way. And it's kind of, you know, like we always say, it's a for, first advice for writers, right? <laughs> it, yeah. is, is to write. <laughs> to write something. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and I was also willing to write something poorly. I think some people, they edit as they go, they edit every line, they ha they want it to be perfect. And I was okay with it being not perfect, you know, very imperfect. And, and then just working with what I had at the end of it. And, you know, my editor is a very good friend who's known me since we were both six. And so I trust to give her something that's terrible and have her you know, rework that in terms of her feedback and then having to go back to the drawing board again. I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. Yeah, and I think most writers, you know, uh, when they're starting out or, or whatever, need to realize that, that that editing process is, no matter how perfect you think you have it, <laughs> the, the, ogre, it's not. the ogre's waiting <laughs> under the bridge for you. <laughs> so. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And, 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 and ironically, sometimes you're the ogre, like yourself. It's, oh, sure. I think sure. sometimes you're your own worst enemy and you're your worst critic. So there's that part too. But yeah, as soon as you publish, you have to be willing to take whatever comes in terms of feedback and cri criticism and praise, um, all of it. So, right, yeah. right. Well, I imagine is a, you're still teaching now, or uh, I am. Yeah, yeah. This is I think year twenty two. Wow. So, wow. yeah. yeah. It, it, what do you do to unwind between uh, writing, parroting, and, and being a teach <laughs> an educator? I know is a tough yeah. job within itself. You know, it's it, it's yeah. not it's not. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. with a, a good lunch. <laughs> Thank you for saying that because uh, there is a whole um, sort of group of people who think that it is. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so kudos for recognizing that it's late nights and a lot of time. But um, unwinding at first, the writing was was that because, you know, writing is healing and it's escapism, it's therapy, it's everything. Um, but I also like hiking and uh, that's where I get a lot of my ideas when I'm on trails and um, cottage country, just kind of trying to take a trip every summer and getting away. So there's there's those kind of respites. Um, I like gardening, uh, which is also, again, being outdoors and, you know, just kind of it's therapeutic too. So I find those things give me inspiration and also just a break away from all of the other responsibilities. Oh, sure. I imagine. Yeah. It kind of clear the mind a bit. So other things besides, uh, <laughs> yeah. great grading and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, well, dealing with teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I had a couple of those myself. I, I, it's, that's why I host cocktails with Cav. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> yeah, yeah we, that's your break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I, I tend to drink a lot since the teenagers. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I I have to tell you I I was fascinated because I know you have a 
a lot of, and I'll put it up on the screen for the viewers to see, you, you have a lot of great works that it, in particular, uh, some series that you started out with, uh, you know, and, and why, why don't you tell us a little bit, a bit, oh, excuse me, it is the cocktails. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about them, uh, the, the, cause I know you won some awards on, uh, some of the books themselves. So please, by all means. Yeah. Um, this, the first trilogy that I did was, uh, the result of travel. So, uh, a friend of mine, um, and I, we went to Ireland and we were just, you know, we rented a car and we drove around and stayed at B&Bs and stuff like that. So, um, while I was there, I was, I was sort of taking note of all of the real historical people that were mentioned at a lot of these sites that we visited. So whether they were, you know, castles or museums and so on, I, I got thinking just and, and inspired to write the story of this one person in particular. So Lady Ellen, um, we were at a place called Kylemore Abbey. And when you go in the entrance to that, it tells the whole history of her real life. And I thought that'd be a fascinating story to tell you know what it was like for her because the family you know the father gambled away their estate and was a you know um sort of an abusive or neglectful father and i thought that would be neat to tell that story um so i was already jotting stuff down in a notebook before i even left the country oh, and wow. when i came home it, it it sort of wrote itself to be honest it just the words sort of poured out um, and I think I wrote the first two books in the series. So Lady Ellen and Two Paths were both published in 2018. And then I think maybe a year and a half later, I finished the series. So oh, that, yeah, it was um, that's beloved by people, but it, it's not my favorite thing that I've ever written, but I still, um, because of the connection to my trip and everything, it, it means a lot. Right, I imagine so. Yeah, and it sounds like mm -hmm. a definitely an in, interesting story, you know. And and I know you you have yeah. a you know that historical edge to it. Always, you know, is a wonderful yeah. tale. That's for sure. But uh, so three books in that series, and and you yeah. know, they they look like they they've been kind of rather successful on <laughs> for you know on sale and with ratings and and. So, and yeah. I know you moved on to the next series and yeah. is that, is that where you kind of hit your stride with, with the rom-com series? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I kind of think of the whole thing almost as just a personal progression because the first book I wrote was just, it was more of a healing journey. And then once I kind of purged that, I didn't want, I didn't need to, and I didn't want to write stuff that was so, I guess, like the melancholy, right? I wanted something uh, lighter. So the historical romance was that, but then it progressed to the point even more where I wanted to try comedy. And as soon as I started writing that, I thought that's that's for me, that the the characters, the tone, just everything about it was, was fun and it, it was a great, it, it was the great escape when I would come home from work and have that hour or whatever to write something that made me laugh. Oh, um, that that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and so the first one in that series was The Future Bride and... That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah tell us about the it, story for sure. It kind of came about sim similar to Ireland. It was just a weird mashup of things happened in my life. So my oldest daughter, uh, was studying karate and I was the driver every weekend and to her competitions and her practices and, and stuff and I started to take notes so every time I had this little notebook and I would write down everything she was doing and learning and all the moves and stuff and then we went on a hiking trip up north northern Ontario and again it was sort of the atmosphere and and that I started to take notes and then at the same time, I was just doing a lot of research into my own family tree. And all three things just combined. I thought, what would happen if the McLeods, you know, kind of did a mashup with comedy and karate and time travel. And it's a whole mess of stuff and it's fun and people seem to like it the best too. So I think that's when you know you've, you've found your passion when 
what you're enjoying the most, other people are also enjoying the most. So it's it's motivating to keep writing it. Yeah, and I could see when you said with the popularity, yeah, because your your mm -hmm. ratings have ballooned on Amazon, obviously. Uh, yeah, it, and it, it that's wonderful, and and that's the first book in the series, and I believe you have the second one out called The Past Love, I believe. The Past Love, yeah. Um, some people sort of assume or think that it's a prequel because it takes place a year before, but I'm writing the third right now, and when that's released, it'll all the sort of the mystery of the time travel and and that will be solved and people will then realize that the past love even though it takes place a year earlier is is actually a, a sequel not a prequel so they do go in the order uh, that they're written in for a reason because all those clues are being laid so that the reader when they have the final conclusion it will all make sense and um, hopefully their minds will be blown a little bit. I think it's, I've, I've been meeting with a, a physics teacher and a biology teacher and a bunch of other things. So getting a little research in, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be big. <laughs> That's right. Readers get with it just because it yep. happened before the first book. It's time travel. It doesn't mean it's, it's a, time a travel. prequel. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're allowed to mess with time. <laughs> uh, that's exactly right. Well, I tell you that you are doing very well with the series and it, it's fascinating. And they are some great stories, uh, the way you laid them out. And you, um, are you are you working on anything now that we should know about? It, that's yeah, a, the, that's so the third one in the series, I'm, I'm at about 300 pages, so it's close and it's been two, just over two years since I've published. So I'm eager to get this thing done and then hand it off to my editor and, and get it out there. So um, it's called The Once and Future Love and it will end the series, like I said. I also have a couple other works in progress um, on the go. I've got a, a book called uh, A Simple pages and it's going to be my first uh, attempt to write something <laughs> I call it clean right <laughs> I don't tend to write that way um, so it's going to be more hallmark style for people who who kind of crave that type of, of writing um, it's a huge challenge for me uh, I don't like I said typically write that style so it's it's a challenge I every project I say to myself what haven't I done what can I challenge myself to do this time and um, I, I wrote a book called A Moment in Time, and that was entirely a challenge to myself. I said, well, I've never written in two points of view before. I've never written a male point of view before, uh, so let's do it, and and I did. And it was sort of sci-fi and stuff too. So yeah, each project just, I grow a bit more and try something new. Oh, well, I tell you what, that that's, we're looking for, when do you think? It'll be out. I'm, I'm um, looking forward to it. It's going. So in the last three or four days, I've written probably a 7,000 words. Uh, so it's, I feel like my motivation is is really high right now. I'm hoping end of January, if if my editor can get, get it back to me, that would be the goal soon. Uh, uh, oh, mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, that's right. Scoop on cocktails with Cab. That's... That's what we yeah, like around here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and tell me, you're entirely self-published now, right? On Amazon. Yes. H have you had any experiences with, you know, actually working with a publishing house or? For so when work? I started, the, the wor I think the world of publishing, it keeps changing, right? It's always evolving. There was just a small imprint that uh, Amazon offered initially, but it closed down. And so then I just went full um, self-publishing. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm just an impatient person. When I get a project done, I want to see it out there in the hands of readers. So I would never be able to wait the two, three years, you know, so that, that it takes sometimes once you hand it off to someone uh, to see it in print. So that's my personal preference is to just go the self-publishing uh, route. Plus. I like dabbling and learning marketing and, and all that side of it. So, and then sharing that with people. So I think that's another reason for the self-publishing. It just keeps that that all in-house. Yeah, I think that's the key really, uh, you know, 
when you talk about the marketing, you know, and, you know, people need to realize with the indie author, it's, you know, that's a huge part of the job, obvious, obviously, to get your work in front of people. It, and, it's daily. Yeah, sure. 100%. It's a grind. Yeah. And, and yeah. well, you know, when you yeah. speak of, of teaching other people or, or, or kind of assisting other people in, in some of the knowledge you've been able to garner over the years. So what, what are you doing on, in that aspect now? As far as, um, you know. So j- just things like what, what didn't work, I think is a huge thing that just to pass that on to people. So back in 2018, the, the sheer amount of, of dollars spent on ads that, that weren't effective because I didn't understand how to set an ad up, how to how to make that work. Um, I, I tell people now, I, I don't pay to market my books, they pay me. So in other words, if I'm not breaking even or making money, I'm doing the ad wrong. Right. Uh, but that's, it, it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of, I guess, learning and savvy. And, and I lost a lot at the start, but I don't anymore. Um, so I just kind of share that when I can. And I also do stuff through Fiverr where I offer different author services, um, such as editing, you know, beta reading, book promotion, all that kind of stuff now too. Right, and, and where do you offer that at? Is that uh, directly on your website through, through or? I think there's links on there. Yes, there are on the, the homepage uh, of my website at the bottom are links to it. And as well, uh, Fiverr, I, you know, is, is a platform just for offering freelance services. So when I kind of got into this and I saw the things that I initially didn't know or the things I needed, I thought, you know, other people might also be looking for those kind of professional services from somebody who's done the trial and error. And, you know, maybe they want professional feedback from somebody who's taught for 20 years, right? It's, it's a different type of feedback than, than your friend. It's, and, and you it's know, kind I, but constructive. And, yeah. and I think you said a, a big key, Jen, really. I mean, you're right. The, the knowledge of what not to do, you know, and avoid that trial and error and, and, and yeah. not reinvent the wheel, you know, it is, has to be extremely helpful. So, yeah, it's it's a great thing. that, And I'm sure your teaching skills would help because we have some hard-headed indie authors out there, you know. It's yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you have to be ready. It's that's the huge thing with with everything, right? You have to be ready and and when you are, I I, I think X is great for that because there's such a supportive community that the advice and and the support's there if you're ready for it. So I love that platform. I've, I've invested a lot of time to make my, you know, my profile, what it is just to be supportive of, of people in the community. And, um, you know, it's reciprocal. People give back what they put in and yes, I I find it very positive that the whole writing community on there. It it really is. And I've just been Mm -hmm. kind of proud to be a small part of, uh, X, you know, with this show and it, cause heck, that's how exactly. I met you, Jen, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, because, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And the writing community yeah. really is and, and is being very yeah. supportive. So it's something for indie authors and other entertainers and, and artists to think about and, and Absolutely. about yeah. that networking and that engagement and, you know, yeah. taking advice. Cause yeah, most people have been at the grind a while and, and, can help you avoid some of the pitfalls for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And and not being afraid to reach out and ask questions. So any newbies watching this who are on on the platform, don't be afraid to ask questions and reach out. And, you know, there's there's going there's kind people who will who will share sort of the, the, the stuff that they've done that didn't work and, and recommend things. So, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Golly. Well, Jen, <laughs> I, I am so appreciative that you you agreed to come on the show and and sh- kind of share your backstory and all your yeah. great works that are are on your Amazon page uh, that are for sale because you just did a wonderful job with the series. But I'm I'm so appreciative sure. that you came on and agreed to kind of tell everybody, uh, you know, especially that last part too. It's very helpful for the for the writing community. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, it was a, a great opportunity. Oh, no, no, I'll tell you, the pleasure's all mine. And please, ladies and gentlemen, everybody, 
go follow Jana over on X. JG Thank McLeod, you. author. Wonderful person to engage with, wonderful person to give you advice, like she said, uh, and, and help with the writing community that's across uh, X. And, and please, by all means, if you don't, oh, I have pointy problems sometimes with the camera, <laughs> but <laughs> by all means, please go at the top of the screen we've had up all show. QR code will take you directly to Jen's Amazon author page where you can check out all of her great works. Uh, and and they are all highly rated, I might add. Very good job. They you have a lot of a lot of reviews and a lot of great ratings, and they are they're wonderful works. So please, ladies and gentlemen, go check that out uh, as well and support Jen in her quest to continue to be an incredible award-winning author. That's for sure. And thank you so much for being a, a teacher and a, and a mom. And you've added the third hardest job in the world, probably, uh, in the author. So, <laughs> but but I Thank certainly you so appreciate you coming on, Jen. I, I really do. And and hope yeah, you no enjoyed the Thank evening you. with us with Cocktails with Cav. I did. Oh, awesome. Well, we'll see you soon, ladies and gentlemen. Again, J.G. McLeod, go visit her right at her Amazon page. And please go follow her on X, JG McLeod author is her handle and and she'll be waiting to help the rest of the writing community. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, I'll thank, be prepared. <laughs> that, that's it. Thanks so much, Jen. Well again, cheers. Cheers.